on currency transactions then first of all a couple of terms for you to get to know functional currency what is the functional currency what currency is it that you function in okay so it will be the currency of your primary economic environment so if you do most of your work in the UK your currency is sterling all right so that's the overall thing it's the currency that influences your selling price your labor your materials that sort of thing and it's the currency that you generate your cash in and it's the currency that you generally spend your cash in okay so it's kind of all of those things and you wait because some of them might be dollars some of them might be sterling some of them might be euros and you make a judgment as to which one's your functional currency <coughs> which currency do you functioning okay moving on then to presentation currency presentation currency literally your functional currency might be euros but you might present your currency in dollars literally the currency is presented in and you might think well that's a bit weird why would you do that and generally of course you don't if your functional currency is in euros then your presentation currency is generally in euros what it often happens though is this might be a sub and the parent company is a USA company and so therefore the group accounts will definitely be in dollars and your functional currency for the sub is in euros so you have to translate that sub so that's a couple of the terms <coughs> excuse me right now how do we uh, deal with this then so uh, this is all to do with an individual company nothing to do with the group situation that i said this is an individual company and you might buy or sell something okay abroad a foreign item well obviously you will translate that at what we call the spot rate or the rate at that time the historic rate now you buy it on credit and so therefore by the time you come to pay or receive the rate the spot rate or the historic rate will have changed okay and the difference between those two goes to the income statement now what also might happen is that you buy and sell and you use the spot rate but then by the time the year end comes it's still owed so you still owe or you still owed at the year end and so what you do is you retranslate your monetary figures to the year end rate now i know what you're thinking that hang on richard i'm completely lost that's fine i'm gonna do some numbers all right so here's this example then we're a us company and we buy goods for 150,000 kroner and it's one dollar to ten kroners okay so let's use this up here let me get rid of all of that bit there for now all right so we buy and sell at this figure here so i'll do the figures like this so we buy and sell in dollars the rate was 10 it's 150,000 so 150,000 divided by 10 is is 15,000 isn't it okay so that would be 15,000 and what we would do, we would debit purchases, 15,000. Credit payables, 15,000. So far, so good. However, <clears throat> when we come to pay it, the rate has changed. When we come to pay it off, um, the rate is now, we pay for our goods at 12. So the rate would be 150,000 divided by 12, which is 12,500. So we only have to pay 12,500, 12, that's good news. So what I'll do then, I'll get rid of my payable of 15,000. I'll credit my cash though with only 12,500. So therefore the other credit that's left over, it's good news to me. And so I credit my income statement. So can you see that I bought and sold it and I thought it was gonna cost me 15,000. I translated the spot rate. Then when I came to pay it, it had moved to 12,500. Because this was a payment, it was good. 
and the difference I put to the income statement there. Okay, now let's do another example. Okay, so in this example, same thing, but it's 200,000. So I will debit purchases, I will credit my payables with 200,000 divided by 10, 20,000. Okay, but this time it's unpaid at the year end. So what I do at the year end, I retranslate any monetary assets and liabilities. What's my monetary liability? It's the payable. So a monetary liability will be a foreign loan, foreign debtor, foreign creditor, or whatever. Okay? So I need to retranslate that 20,000, this time at the rate of 9. So 20,000 divided by 9. My payable should be, uh, sorry, 200,000, wasn't it? 200,000 divided by 9. My payable should be 22,222. Okay? And so therefore, I need to increase my payable by... 222, yep, to get from 20 to 22, 222. All right, so that's all I've done. I've retranslated at the year end. Where does the difference go? Am I pleased that my payables got bigger? No, I'm not. I'm annoyed at it. The difference goes to the income statement. All right, so there you can see then what I'm trying to do here. If I can just recap all of this. And it might therefore then make a little bit more sense to us. So, off I go then. I buy something, I translate it, debit purchases, credit creditors, or debit debtors, credit sales at the spot rate. Then when I come to pay the money, I will have to pay a different rate. So where does the difference go? The income statement. Or it could be I buy something, and I translate it at the spot rate, but it's still owed at the year end rate. And all I do is retranslate any monetary, if it's still unpaid, there will still be a payable, or if it's a receipt, a receivable. And so I have to retranslate that monetary asset or that monetary liability at the year end rate. So again, I'm using a different rate, where does the difference go? Income statement again. All right. So, difference between buying and selling and paying, difference to the income statement. Difference between buying and selling in the year end, difference to the income statement. 